In this presentation, we're going to take the information from our payroll register for the second month of the operations of payroll, the month of September, and record it into our journal entry, into the general journal and the general ledger and the trial balance. Remember, this is a process that many people, many accountants, don't fully understand. So if you can really understand these payroll journal entries, then you're understanding debits and credits really, even if you're not processing payroll, by the way, you're still understanding debits and credits really well and you're getting a, a good concept of how to record and post uh, journal entries that are probably some of the more complex journal entries that we will see. So to do that, I'm gonna do September. We're gonna do September here. Now there's still a situation of us having to pull over the wrong information, possibly making a mistake and pulling over the wrong information. So to make sure to pull over the right information, we may wanna make this uh, green again and uh, then freeze our panes so that we can see the header column. So to do that, I'm gonna put my cursor on uh, B12 and highlight all the way over to uh, B15. Right click and go to the paint and make that green. Then we're gonna scroll up top and I'm gonna to try to keep this header row. Now, uh, so to do that, we'll, we'll put our cursor right here on uh, B4. Make sure you're scrolled all the way to the top and then go to the view tab up top, windows group and freeze panes and freeze that pane. Okay, if the pane is frozen, we're scrolling down. So we can just see September, we can see the headers. This is the information that we wanna pull from. We're pulling from the totals. So the blue area right under the green area is where we want. Now we put this information on the second tab here. So it's the GL tab. So we're gonna to have to go back and forth a bit from tab to tab to uh, pull the information to the GL tab to make the journal entry. So let's go over to the GL tab. Now, last time we were here, we left off entering this information for the first uh, pay period and we're, we're out of space here. So what we wanna do is, is uh, unhide some cells and, and then get to a situation where we can enter data as easily as possible. So to do that, see how it goes from B, C, D, E, and then it goes to A, D. I'm just gonna highlight over this cell where I know there's some hidden cells right here. So we'll put our cursor right on the E, so it has this drop down, left click, and then go to AF, let go. Put your cursor on the selected area and right click and unhide. So here's our data. And if you go to the right too, there should be, I'm gonna unhide to the right. And also you may have the frozen panes still in place here. So if, if something's happening that's funny, such as I can't get over to column A, uh, sometimes that's a hidden pane over there or it's it's the panes are still frozen so if we go to the view tab up top windows freeze panes we want to unfreeze panes right now so we can see everything and then if we scroll over we can see our dates here okay so now what we want to do is I want to freeze the panes just to have the information where we want to put the input so and that's going to be here in columns G to K so I'm going to I'm going to um, hide these cells over here. We don't need these anymore. So I'm going to put my cursor on F all the way to, to A. Make sure you're selecting the whole uh, column. Right click the selected area and hide. And then we're going to do the same for the, for the sheets to the right that we don't need right now. So from L, I'm going to put my cursor right on L. We are going to put our cursor on L and go all the way to the right to AD. Let go. Right click and hide. Okay, so here's the data that, actually, I'm gonna unhide that. I like to have that little space there. So we're gonna go from L <laughs> and I'm gonna go to AC. So we have this AD is a little space and so we'll have that. So we'll hide. So if you wanted to unhide and do that again, to unhide, you have to just highlight over the highlighted area. And it doesn't matter how many rows you go over. So if you wanted to unhide, right click, unhide, and then do the process again. Okay, so now we're going to enter this information. We're just going to pull the information. Remember, there's going to be two journal entries to record the payroll and then one to record after the payroll is over the actual payment of payroll. First journal entry will be the employee payroll earnings that we're going to have to record, then the employer portion. That's how I would think of it. We have an employee journal entry and then an employer journal entry. And then we're going to have to pay the, what we withheld from the employees and what we owe for the employer payroll taxes. So to do this, um, we're going to say first the employee, 
And again, if, if you think about the, the most common or easiest way that payroll would be recorded, that's kind of a good place to start. What would you do if we didn't have all this payroll uh, withholding stuff? You would just probably say, well, cash is going down. I would credit cash and I would debit payroll expense or something like that. Salaries and wages expense. That would be it. Be very soon be as easy as any other journal entry. But now we're going to do all these withholdings. So it's still the basis is still there. Cash is going to go down, but I'm not going to start with that. I'm going to format cash at the end because it'll look kind of like the gross check going to the, to the net check, the cash being the net check. So that'll be a credit at the bottom of the journal entry. And so we're going to start with the expense, which will be the first thing. So the expenses go up, expenses have debit balances. We're going to start with salaries and wages. So we're going to copy salaries and wages. That'll be our starting point. We're going to put that in H5, right click and paste, one, two, three. Okay, so then if we get the information from our register, we'll go back to our register. Now the total earnings then are going to be uh, the earnings here. Now we could pick this up with a formula. So I'm gonna go back to it. So I'm gonna jump back and forth here. We're gonna go back to the GL. We're gonna be in J5. And I'm just gonna say equals, jump back to the register tab. And we wanna pick up that 48, 77.50 and enter. So there we have that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do mimic basically what we have here. So if I go back to the register, we're just mimicking everything that's going to be pulled out. And that's going to include OASDI, Social Security, HI, Medicare, FIT, Federal Income Tax, Group Insurance, Union Dues, 401k, and that'll give us the net pay. So let's do that. We're going to start with OASDI. We scroll back over here to the GL. So where are we going to put that? It's not going to be an expense. It's going to have to be some credit because it's going to have to reduce this amount here. It's going to be a liability. It's going to be something that we took from the employee's paycheck that they earned. We're taking it from them. We don't get to keep it. It's not credit to revenue for us. <laughs> it's going to be a credit to uh, these liability accounts. So here we have FICA uh, for Social Security, Medicare, not FIT or SUTA yet, those are employer taxes. So I, if I hold down control, then we're also gonna pick up, I'm gonna skip those two. I'm gonna let go, I've let go of my mouse, I've highlighted these two, selected them, let go of my mouse, and then hold down control. We are gonna pick up FIT, group insurance, union uh, dues, and retirement. So note, I can select all of these, even though there's kind of a space here, a gap, by selecting these two and then holding down control and selecting the rest of them and we can copy them all then at the same time or we can do them one by one or we can type them in over here that's either way works right click and copy and then we're going to scroll up top we're going to put that in h6 right click paste one two three now we just need to pull over this information they're all going to be credits they're all going to be liabilities going up so in k6 i'm going to put not equals but negative go back to my earnings record, our earnings record, we're going to say this is the OASDI in uh, N16 and enter. I'm just going to do this all the way down. Here's HI. I'm just going to put negative instead of equals to put a, put a credit. Go back to the earnings record. Here's the HI and enter. We're in the FIT. We're just going to say negative. Go back to the register FIT and enter. Here's the group insurance. We're just going to say negative. Go back to the register. There's the group insurance and enter. Here's the union dues. We're just going to say negative. Go back to the register, union dues and enter. Here's the 401k retirement plan. We're going to say negative. Go back to the register, pick up the 401k and enter. So there's our information and note that the debits don't equal the credits. The credits equal 20,374, the debt 27 cents. The debits equal the 48. The next step is to have the plug. I use it as the plug and the check figure. What should the plug be? Cash, the cash that's going out. How should that match the register? It should be equal to the net check, 2770523. So let's see if that's the case. That'll be our kind of our check. So we'll go back over here and, and uh, I'm going to use our negative sum formula. The plug formula equals negative sum. Double click the sum, 
highlight the 4877 down to the 2774 and enter. So there we have that. And then we're going to put that to cash. So we're going to highlight the 100 and the cash checking account. Right click and copy. We're going to put that in uh, H12. Right click and paste 123. So there's our information. Now we'll post this transaction to the general ledger. Uh, to do that, we're going to post first the uh, this item here. Now we might want to freeze the panes. So I'm going to scroll up just a bit and go to this cell in AD1. And I want to be able to see this screen no matter where we go on the other side here. So to do that, we're going to go make sure you're on AD1. Then go to the View tab, Windows Group, and Freeze Panes and freeze the panes. Now, if you can't freeze the panes for any reason, that's okay. It'll just take a little bit more scrolling to, to, to pick up this information. So we're gonna have this uh, in 502. If we scroll down, it's in order, assets, liabilities, and then equity and income. Here's 502 on the income statement. If we scroll to the right to find 502, it's in assets, liability, equity. Uh, here's still liabilities and here's the uh, 502 it's in all the way over here in bm19 where we will say 10 1 and we want to pick up in bn19 equals scroll up just a bit and we're picking up that 48,077 and enter so there's our information it brings the balance up from 48,896 by 48,777 to if we scroll back over, I'm going to put my cursor right on the left side of, of the frozen panes and go right. And there's our information right here on the trial balance. Okay, so then if we scroll back up, I'm going to make this a bit smaller so we can see this all on one screen. We're going to pick up this um, 215. So uh, count 215. If I scroll over account 215, I'm going to make this a little smaller if we scroll back down we're looking for 215 that's going to be this item so it's going to be the same order on the gl third liability account scroll to the right if we scroll down just a bit we got 213 and then here's 215 so we're picking it up here on as9 we're going to say uh, 10 1 tab and then in AT9, we will say equals, and we're going to pick up this uh, 298081, and that'll bring the balance back up to that 298081. If we put our cursor right to the left of the frozen panes and scroll right, then we'll see that information here as well. Now we're going to go to 220. So 220 is going to be the next item down, and there's 220. We're going to scroll to the right and see if we can find 220. So here's 215, here's 220. So we are going to be in cell AW9. Date is 10 1. And then in AX9, we'll say equals. And we're going to point to that 697 12, bringing the balance up to 697 12. And it's, it's rounding a bit differently. Oh, it's because of rounding here. So we'll. we'll be okay with that we're gonna to go to the left we're gonna go right one and so there's our information there now we're gonna to go to 225 so 225 if we scroll back to the right we're looking for 225 so here's 223 there's 225 so once again date 10 1 we're on BE 8 now BF 8 and we're going to pick up the information by saying equals and we're looking for 225 which is this 8404 and enter then we'll go right to the left of the frozen panes and scroll right once and there we have our information here okay so now we're looking for uh 243 here it is in the journal entry here it is on the trial balance if we scroll right looking for 243 And there it is. So 243 scrolling down just a bit. This is going to be in BE22. 
we're going to say 10, 1, and then in BF22 equals, we'll scroll up and we'll pick up this 5,500 and a penny. <laughs> so there's that amount. And then we're going to scroll to the right, or let's put our cursor right to the left of the frozen panes and then scroll uh, right once. And so there's this information for the uh, retirement plan, it looks like, that we put in there. And now we're going to the union 245, 245. So let's find account 245. Scroll into the right. Scrolling up just a bit. Here's 245. So as of 10, 1 tab in cell BJ7 equals. And we're looking for 245. Here's that 16 and enter, bringing the balance up to 32. Then if we go right to the left of the, of the frozen panes and scroll right, then that same information should be here as well. Now we're going to go to 247, the retirement plan, which is down here, 247. Scroll into the right to find 247. We're going to scroll to the right and there's 247. It's in cell BI22. I'm going to say 10, 1, Oop, 10, 1, and then in cell BJ22 equals, and we're going to pick up that uh, 2774.20 and enter. Brings the balance up. Then we're going to put our cursor right to the left of the frozen panes and scroll right. And that same information then is at, is here. Then we're going to pick up the cash. So here's the cash on the journal on the journal entry. Here's the cash on the uh, ledger. The general journal being the same area. It's the first one. So here it is on AK8101. Here we are in AL8 equals, and we're picking up that 27705 and enter. So there brings our cash to. Five uh, twenty six nine fifty five fifty one. If we scroll back over, we see that same information on the trial balance, and the trial balance should now be in balance. Note the result of this journal entry is that the expenses went up. Now, of course, this has given us two journal entries. Now it's summing both the data, but the expenses are going up, and the payroll taxes have not been recorded yet, and all of our liability accounts have now been increased, and we're going to have to pay them at some point. Now that's just going to be the employee portion to record payroll. Now we got to record the employer portion of payroll taxes. So in this case, um, we know that cash and we're first going to start with the liabilities. Now, if we go back to our register, what we're picking up this time is everything in the orange area, employer taxes, uh, social security, Medicare, FUTA and SUTA. These two are matching. They're both in the employee and employer portion but this is the employer portion that's not coming out of the paycheck. FUTA, federal unemployment tax, SUTA, federal, state unemployment tax are federal only taxes. They're not coming out of the state checks. So if we go back to the GL then, we, we're gonna have uh, an expense here. So looking at our general ledger then, uh, we're gonna say that what we have here is the FICA, OASDI, the HI, and then the FUTA and the SUTA. These are gonna be the liabilities we need to pick up. So I'm just gonna highlight from AE12 down to the, uh, what is that, uh, AF15. Let go of the selected area, right click and copy. And then I'm gonna skip a line because we're gonna put this on the bottom. They're gonna increase the liabilities and therefore be credits. So we'll be on cell H15 under the date right click and paste one two three and then the debit is going to be payroll taxes expense so remember this is the tax portion we haven't recorded any taxes yet even though we had liabilities related in the prior journal entry this is the only employer taxes that we have so these are going to be debits they're going to go up in the debit directions we'll right click there copy that put that on, on top in h14 right click and paste one two three all right, so we're gonna pick this information up from our register, we'll, we'll pick up all the liabilities and then the payroll expense will be just the sum of them. So we're gonna start here in K15, we're gonna say negative instead of equal so we can flip the sign and then go to the register and we wanna pick up the OASDI and enter. 
And then we want to go to the 220 FICA for the um, Medicare. So we're in K16 negative and then go to the earnings records and we want to pick up this 697.12 and enter. Then we're in K17 for the FUTA. We're going to say negative and then go back over to the register and pick up the FUTA and enter. Then we're in K18. We're going to say negative. This is SUTA and go back over and pick up the SUTA and enter. So there's our information. If we sum that up, flip the sign, that's what the debit's going to be, 4,266.17. That's going to go here in J14. I'm going to do that with our plug formula, negative, S-U-M, double click the sum. I'm going to move this over now, and then we're going to highlight this information and enter. So there's our payroll uh, taxes journal entry. <laughs> so let's record this now. So here's the uh, 512. So we're going to go find 512. I'm going to see if we can make this. We're going to find 512 in the general ledger. So uh, of, of course, it's it's dim way down here. So it's going to be in the same order on the GL. So we're going to go to the right. We're looking for 512. It's order assets, liability, equity, income, and expenses. Scrolling all the way over, and we see uh, 502, and we're looking for payroll taxes. And here's the payroll tax expense. It's 520, not 512, 520. So here it is in uh, BQ7. We're going to do this. Now, this one's as of 10-1, uh, and we're in BR7, which will equal... And we'll pick up this 4,266, enter, bringing the balance up. So if we put our cursor right to the left of the frozen screen and scroll right, then we should see that same balance here. Then we're going to record on 215. So here's 215, account 215. That's a liability account. Here it is. So it's our third liability. It should be in the same order on the GL. Assets, liabilities. We're looking for account 215. Here it is. This is on... 10 1 in AT uh, 10 we're gonna see the employee portion right above it on the same date now the employer portion equals this 298081 bringing the balance to 5961 if we go right to the right or the left of the frozen screen and then go right then we see our balance down here for uh, uh, FICA for the 215 account. And now we're gonna to go to the 220 account. That's gonna be right underneath, 220. Same order on the GL if we go to the right. We're looking for account 220. So 220, 220, 220. So here it is for Medicare. So 220, we're gonna be in AW10 as of 10-1. Now we're in AX10 equals and we're going to scroll down just a bit and pick up that 697 and enter. And that'll bring the balance up. So again, we have the matching here, two accounts, one in the prior journal entry, the employee, and now in the employer uh, portion. That'll bring the balance up to 1394. If we go back to the left side of the frozen screen and click right, then we should see that same amount here. Now the employer only taxes, FUTA and SUTA, 223 is here 223 same order on the gl we're looking for 223 so we're looking for 223 here's 220 here's 223 so we are in ba8 uh, it's going to be on 10 1 date and then on bb8 we're going to say equals and scroll down to that futa in k7 and enter so that's going to bring the balance up to 4262 if we go right to the left side of the frozen screen and scroll right, then there's the 42 here. Now we're going to go to Suta on 224. Here's 224. I'm going to scroll to the right and look for account 224. Scroll up just a bit, looking for 224. It's going to be down just a bit. So we're going to be down here in BA22, 10 1, date BB22, cell. We're going to say this equals and go over to the SUTA and that'll bring the balance up to that 545.62. Uh, 
If we go right to the left of the frozen screens and scroll right, then we should see that amount here as well on the trial balance. That should put us back in balance here. Note the two accounts affecting the net income are from the first journal entry, the wages payable, the second, the payroll taxes. And uh, all these other things that we withheld on the first journal entry are, are not uh, directly involved. They're not payroll tax expenses to us. Only the employer portion are recorded as payroll tax expenses to us as the company on the, on the financials. Okay, next journal entry, we're gonna say 15 more days have passed. We're gonna pretend 15 days have passed and we've taken this information from the employees and recorded our portion of the employer taxes for payroll. Now we need to pay it. So just like we would with accounts payable, it went up, now it's gonna go down. We're gonna pay it, we're gonna pay it with what? Cash. So cash is gonna go down and um, we're gonna record all these other liabilities. Now I'm gonna record cash last here because it's gonna be a credit to cash, decreasing cash, and it'll be just basically the sum of all these uh, accounts we will make here. Now note, just, to, just as a note, in practice, in real life, we might you know, get this information and record it from summary from, a, from an outside uh, payroll provider that does our payroll for us, and we could do it in one journal entry there. But also, we'll have a, if we were doing it in practice, we could have a, a separate paycheck for each individual employee, or in this case, we might have to have a, a separate deposit for the federal taxes and the state taxes possibly. And um, so note that the, it could be broken out a little bit differently in multiple checks to pay off the, the, uh, the payments. However, uh, in, in essence, it'll be the same type of thing. We're doing this with journal entries. If we were to write a check in the system, we would have to write you know, at least one check for the uh, FICA and social security and possibly separate checks for FUTA and SUTA. But we're going to do the journal entry. It'll all be the, the same type of journal entry. It, it, the payable goes up and then we pay it off. Okay, so here's all the liabilities we need to pay off. We need to pay off uh, OASDI, HI, FUTA, and SUTA, and the federal income tax. So we're just going to pay all these amounts there and just take it out of cash. We're going to leave the group insurance, the union dues, and the retirement right now and just accumulate those upwards as liabilities that we owe to the employees. We owe the 401k. Uh, payments in some way, shape, or form. The union dues, we got to pay to the union. We're not going to record the payment, but obviously we would have to pay that to the union. We're just going to let them accumulate uh, the retirement plan. Now, this is the insurance. We would have to pay the insurance in some way, shape, or form. Retirement plan is going to have to be re repaid in some way, shape, or form. We're not going to get into the details there. We're going to pay the payroll tax. So we're going to right click here. We're going to put that in cell H20, right click and paste one, two, three. Then we'll pull the amounts and we're just gonna, these are all credits, so we're gonna do the opposite and debit them to make them go down. Now note, you, you might be tempted to do a journal entry here and say equals the cell. We can't do that because it'll make a circle reference when we post it. So, because when we post it, this number will change and then we posted it using this number and that doesn't, that's a circle reference. We can't take this number in order to make this number and then change this number based on this number that we use to make this number. So just that's why we're not using a, a formula. You can try that just to see what circle reference is. <laughs> Once we post it, it'll be a problem. So again, okay, we're just gonna type these in there, 5961.61, and then the next one for um, FICA, 1394.25, and then FUTA, 42.62, and then SUTA is gonna be 545.62, and federal income tax, 8404.13. And then we will sum these up. We will need a credit then, which of course will go to cash. So I'm gonna copy the cash, right click on E, uh, A, E, and A, F, five, and copy. And we'll put that on the bottom here for cash in H25, right click and paste one, two, three. And the amount is gonna be, if we sum this up, it's 1634823. I'm gonna use our plug formula, negative SUM, double click the sum function and highlight this information and enter. So there we have it. So now let's post this out. So here's 215, we're gonna record this one first. So 215 up top, I'm gonna scroll to the right. It's gonna be the same order on the uh, general ledger. Here's 210, here's 210, here's 215. 
So we are in cell AS11. Uh, this is going to be 1015 now when we're actually making the payment. And we're just going to say equals and scroll down to the 5961. Make sure you're picking up the correct journal entry because clearly we have a few now. And, and it might help too if you're if we get mixed up to highlight the journal entry we are on. Sometimes I do this. Right click and make it green just so um, the colors actually help. I used to think colors were not you know not accountant like but uh, they're really helpful <laughs> so we're just going to pick up the green numbers now so now we're going to say 220 so here's 220 here's 220 so we're going to scroll to the right and find 220 and so we're looking for 220 and so here we got it and it's going to be in cell aw 11 10 15 then in cell ax 11 we'll say equals scroll down just a bit and we'll point to this 1394 and enter so it goes down to zero if we go right to the right of the frozen panes we can see that these are going down to zero now zero and zero now futa so here's futa 223 scrolling to the right looking for 223 here's 224 we want 223 it's going to be as of 10 15 in cell bb9 equals scroll down we're looking for the green area 42 enter so that brings it down to zero if we go right to the left of the frozen panes and scroll right we can see it goes to zero on the uh, trial balance then we're looking for suta 224 so we'll scroll to the right to find suta so 223 225 so here we are on 1015 in BB23 equals, and we're looking for this uh, 550, 545, enter, and that brings us back down to zero. Does typically what you would think in, in a payable account, just like accounts payable, it goes up and then it goes down. You know, we, we owe money and then we pay money. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the FIT. So I'm gonna go to the right of the frozen pane one more time, FIT. 225 let's look for 225 so here's 224 here's 225 we're on 10 15 tab in bf9 we're going to say equals and point to that 8404 13 bringing us back down to zero same effect on the payable account and then if we scroll to the right or if we go to the left of the frozen panes and scroll right once we'll see it goes down to zero on the trial balance as well and then we got, uh, we should be in balance by this point. Oh, we didn't record the checking. Now we're gonna record the cash, the cash going out. So here's the cash, that's our first account. So if we scroll to the right, we're gonna be on AK10, 10, 10, 15, on AL9, uh, yeah, nine. we're on nine, not 10, equals, and we'll pick up this 16348. So there we have cash going down to 510607 if we scroll to the left of the frozen panes and scroll right we should have that same amount here and there is our journal entry so now we've recorded the employee portion the employer portion and we you know the the salary expenses and the withholdings and then the employer portion of taxes and then now then we paid it 15 days later last thing i'm going to do is just make this um, back to our normal blue so i'm going to highlight this right click and we can go here and then we can make it our normal blue here which is also on the wheel if we go to this wheel the standard it's right there or you can format paint it so if you wanted to format paint it just make sure you're picking up the whole row don't pick up one cell and try to paint the color because you're going to paint the format too so we want to make sure we pick up this whole row go to the home tab paint brush and then pick up these full rows it should paint brush the, the color and you know the same formatting for the respective columns.